I remember going into Grafton with Puck Pong Pandarek, who was a friend of mine, uh, who's a Thai guy from Bangkok, and uh, the most amazing sportsman, swimmer and basketball player. This guy was just a ninja, unbelievable. Yeah. Excuse the pun. Uh, <laughs> edit. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to the Mo Show, episode 19. Uh, I'd like to introduce a young man who I went to school with about 20 years ago in England, uh, in a little town called Buckingham. Um, without a doubt, the baddest man on any rugby field, I remember quite clearly. Today, he's the founder uh, and owner of a premium vitamins brand that specializes in minerals and nutritional supplements called Tom Oliver Nutrition. I'd like to welcome none other than Tom Oliver. Welcome. Wow, thank you, Mo. Great to, to be here. managed to get through that quite uh, flawlessly, huh? I'm honored to be on the Mo Show. <laughs> Honor is all mine, Tom. How have you been, brother? Very good. Very good. You look well. I'm good. I'm good. Enjoying being in Saudi. Amazing. Always love to hear that. You visiting now? You've been here for how long? We've been here for a few weeks. Okay. Uh, in-laws very generously extended their stay in the UK to uh, to to be me with be with me and the wife and the baby. Um, so yeah, we we've now come back over here to spend the rest of the the lockdown over here. Awesome. Tom is married to my cousin. Uh, they got married a year and a half ago, was it? Uh, Almost yeah. two? Yeah. yeah, yeah, 20th of April yeah. in, uh, in Madrid. In Madrid, yeah. They now have a, uh, a beautiful one-year-old, Zaid, uh, and they live uh, in England, in Oxfordshire, and they're here visiting at the moment and uh, loving, loving, what they're, uh, loving what they're up to over here. Uh, so that's a little bit, a little bit of background on, uh, on Tom. Uh, Tom, give me a little update on, the, uh, on your upbringing, school days, uh, what was like? What was life like growing up in England back when you were uh, a schoolboy? Well, I, mean, I, w I was at boarding school pretty young. I mean, I was uh, ingratiated to the, pub the, the the English prep school system. Mm. I think eight, eight or nine. Which school? Uh, Swanbourne House. Okay. And uh, I, I literally remember it vividly. I was really not wanting to go, and I remember getting my. It was a winter. It must have been autumn, so it must have been sort of September. So it was cold. And my mother made me wear this uh, horrible, horrible, thick tweed sports jacket, <laughs> which I fought not to wear. I mean, I, f I can feel the itch now. And I remember getting out of the car at this beautiful prep school and it was, uh, it was dark, it was the evening, and going into this mansion and going upstairs to the, uh, the main hallway, meeting my matrons who were both wearing, Miss Jarvis and Miss Cal, wearing these long tweed uh, skirts. Yeah and uh, like little uh, you know cardigans blazers and uh, all very twee and uh, and i remember looking at the ceiling uh, the really tall ceilings mm. to hold the tears in to my eyes i was hoping I'd, i i didn't want them to see me crying mm. so i figured if i looked at the ceiling they wouldn't see the tears building up in my <laughs> eyes <laughs> so i remember saying goodbye to my mother like totally homesick i went to the, i said can i can i use the bathroom mm. and i went to the loo at the end of the corridor lost it and I remember looking out of the car, out of the window, down the driveway, seeing my mother drive off, off down the drive. Oh, I mean, heartbreak. Oh, I mean, it's, cruel. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's modern day cruelty. It was brutal. It was brutal yeah. at the time. Yeah. But I think I, I had a week, and then I, I I was meant to be going home at weekends. Okay. But I don't think I went home. Loved it that much. Loved it. Yeah. yeah. It's tough being away from from home for the first time. I think the first time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah was definitely. it was it the first time? Yeah, I'd say first time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was, I was 11. I remember when I went to Papelwick in Asker. Ah, oh, you did. Uh, yeah, and um, it was miserable. The first, it took me maybe two months. With Theo Papadopoulos. God, he rings a bell. Yeah, there are yeah. there are a few Stokes went to <laughs> Papelwick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It rings a bell, absolutely. Uh, yeah. um, so it was um, it was uh, quite a mission to you know to try to get accustomed to what life is like outside of Saudi. Um, oh. You know, away from my mum, someone who I took for granted, being there every day. And here I am in the hands of matrons and, uh, and my friends. But yeah, after two months, I never looked back. Yeah. Um, the good days, I look back at it very fondly. There's something about being with all your friends. I mean, luckily, you know, I was fortunate enough to be an outgoing, sort of gregarious human. Uh, others, I imagine, perhaps, you know, I discussed with my wife, you know, would, would they go to uh, Swanbourne as a prep school? Mm -hmm. or would, he get, would he go away to boarding school? I guess it's very character dependent because you see sure. some would struggle. Yeah. I was a I was an extrovert and I enjoyed like you know all the activities that school offered and the people and you, know, you, you go head first you know uh, but others perhaps not 
Right. But uh, but yeah, I, I didn't look back. I just loved being there with my friends, building yeah. camps and playing sports and yeah. all the things you know young guys enjoy. It's it's an interesting point you bring up to, to current fathers. You know, uh, monitor your child's behavior uh, and see if he's fit for the boarding school life. It isn't for everyone. Yeah. Uh, I remember some you know nasty stories uh, of uh, children being bullied in school, and one of my regrets actually is looking back and not standing up for those who have been bullied. Um, not, not so much participating in the bullying, but just watching there, not doing anything about it. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, you know, m monitoring your child's behavior because it's not for everyone. And um, you know, yeah. luckily it was for me and you. But uh, I'm on the fence as well. Do I want to send my son there or not? You know, it's something that you have to really be mindful of. Yeah. Uh, so I absolutely. met you in Stowe uh, back in '97 is when I moved there. You were a year above me. Yeah. Um, and I told you this when you know I found out that you're marrying my cousin. They were, they were like, uh, so Tom went to school with you in England. I was like, yeah, he was at Stowe with me. He was the year above. What's he like? What's he like? What's he like? And I was like, oh uh, God. <laughs> I'll tell you what he's like. He's the kind of guy you want on a rugby pitch on your team when shit goes down. <laughs> <laughs> you know? They're like, okay, great. So besides that, what's he like? <laughs> Everyone's asking yeah, me. not the best. When am I ever going to be in a rugby pitch? But yeah. never know. Um, you always, uh, you know, you stood up for your teammates. You were the first yeah. person either breaking up or getting involved. Like if a teammate of yours was high tackled, you know, you, you'd let the person putting in the tackle know uh, not to do yeah. that again. Uh, you're always in the, in the thick of it. Uh, and that's the memory I take of you, um, you know, from Stoke. <laughs> I don't know whether that's a compliment or not. It is. It shows <laughs> you've got a big heart and you stand up for your friends. Sorry, yeah, but yeah. You know, I, I want my son to have a friend like you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I was always on the right side of the law. Uh, on you know on the sports field, but I was I definitely uh, I definitely played with an intensity that, that I sort of you know I was proud of and mm -hmm. uh, but yeah I, I, I'm 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 a big advocate of fairness yeah. and uh, and playing hard so I, I I played I played hard and tried to lead from the front and uh, and yeah I mean those days are those days are long gone <laughs> but that is seriously seriously uh, enjoy thinking back and uh, reminiscing with mates that from school. Uh, those those bonds you created during those sorts of uh, those sorts of environments were just uh, for life. Yeah, yeah, for life. Yeah, absolutely. I remember being in the tuck shop. Someone coming in saying Oliver just nobbled someone on the north front, and we'd all like twenty of us run to see what happened. And you know, <laughs> scrum cap off, you know, nose bleeding from you. <laughs> but look at the other guy, <laughs> stretch oh, it off. Yeah, yeah. I think we can edit that bit good, out. Can good we? times. Good edit times. that bit out. Um, did you enjoy the? I mean, aside from rugby, did you enjoy the public school? Um, set up, you know, the lifestyle, everything about it. Did you enjoy it? I mean, I, I have, I have a qualm or two that I'd like to mention. But how did you do? You like or dislike public school days? Well, I was never an academic, and uh, I, I had a few places I was, I was going to go. I was going to go to Millfield. I was going to go to another school, uh, and um, and actually, I had a scholarship. I had a sport. I was a sports scholar, mm -hmm. so I was never an academic. Oh, so I was the only. Sports. I was the first sports scholar in 1995 to get a pure sports scholarship to school to Stowe, yeah. and I was meant to go to Millfield, and uh, Stowe offered a better price. Basically, they offered my mother a, a nice discount and Amazing. said, "I want Tom to come and, and play sports." So, M for Millfield offered you that as well. No, they offered me less, 35 yes. percent. Okay. And st number one st rugby school in, in the nation, isn't it? Yeah, they were they were pretty good. And their facilities were fantastic. But you're 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 a sort of small fish in a big pond at Milford. Yeah, yeah. And my mother took the uh, the the sort of the the thought that perhaps to be a, a bigger fish in a smaller pond would benefit me from a sports point yeah, of view. But rightly so. So yeah. Anyway, so I ended up going to Stowe, and uh, yeah, I mean, for me, it was fantastic. I mean, it was it was obviously it's a bit of daunting experience when you first go, but all of the the facilities and the, the camaraderie, the relationships you build. I was never an academic, but I, in, in Stowe, whether or not Stowe was a, uh, it's not, it wasn't exactly an academic, it no, it academic wasn't known school. For it, yeah. um, we used to get made fun of by uh, opposing teams that you're at Stowe, you know, you're, you're a little thick. <laughs> did we? I, I probably had the red mist by then, so totally I wouldn't have did. remembered. Yeah, I remember uh, hearing <laughs> that. Water boys end up hearing these things. <laughs> So no, I mean, uh, for me, it was it was fantastic. I, I have no, I have, you know, you have, I was a glutton for punishment. I used to love teasing the guys in the year above and getting a good beating. I mean, but so I, I deserve the, all, all the, you know, all that I dished out, I deserve, but. Yeah. Uh, You're Bruce, it, Bruce? Yeah, Bruce, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I love having, you know, teasing the guys in the year above and then running away and getting a good seeing too. <laughs> 
a few punches on the arm afterwards. Yeah. So, I mean, but it's not for everyone. I mean, definitely not for everyone. No. It's, uh, no. for, for me, personally, fantastic. Yeah. I have no regrets, loved it. The only regret I have is probably not working hard enough academically okay. because I was just wasn't interested. And they allowed me almost to get away with doing the bare minimum. Because of your uh, contribution to sports? Uh, pretty much. Yeah. I got away with it. Yeah. And, uh, but really, I, I, in hindsight, I wish I'd applied myself because yeah. we touched upon it earlier. You know, so many areas that so many uh, there were so many assets available to us at Stowe. You know, things like you know acting, for example, great fun. I mean, I wish I, I wish I'd done more of it. Not because I wanted to be an actor, but because it's actually quite fun. And and then all the other all the other elements of of school life. I focus very much on sports and being a bit of a you know joker. Um, so yeah, but, but yeah, I mean, I have massively fond memories, and really the relationships I have now with my with my best buddies, you know, the guys that were ushers at my wedding and etc. Et they're all all old Stoics. Yeah, so I remember uh, them, all of them. Yeah, yeah. Marcus, Angus, Baba, yeah, to yeah, name yeah. a few. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like a memory. And, and the other thing is a melting pot. And the fantastic thing about yeah. Stowe is you've got a melting pot of people from all over the world, yeah. all over the country. I had friends from Zambia, Nigeria, Saudi yeah. Arabia, Russia, Thailand, you know. Yes. So you, you get this, you almost get this inherent uh, understanding of the world, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, understanding of geography, but you, you get a, a desire to see the world yeah. because, you, 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 you know, I, used to, I remember going into Grafton with Puk Pong Pundarik, who is a friend of mine, uh, who's a Thai guy from Bangkok, and uh, the most amazing sportsman, swimmer and basketball player. This guy was just a ninja, unbelievable. Yeah. Excuse the pun. Uh, <laughs> edit. Um, but no, Puck used, Puck used to say, come, f come for break time you know, into Grafton. And we used to eat noodles. Yeah. Uh, I was 13 years old. I'd never eaten noodles yeah, before yeah, in my life. Yeah, yeah. And this was, uh, they were super spicy. I was yeah. like, what the hell are these guys eating? <laughs> and it gives you this weird sort of early entrance level understanding and, and, and hunger to know more about different cultures. Different cultures. Yeah. Yeah. And same with my mates from Nigeria and Cav from Zambia and, and you name it, from India and Saudi Arabia. Yeah. I was with, I was with, you know, had Saudi guys in class with me as well. So yeah, it really, uh, a melting pot yeah. so that's uh, I think that's really valuable yeah. it gives you tolerance you know to, to, to country to new people from different countries and cultures yeah awareness yeah from awareness. a young age yeah from so a young anyone age you meet growing up you know yeah. you've had that experience you know just around Brits uh, or Americans which you may not ordinarily ordinarily get if you're if you're dumped into a little English school or if yeah. you're dumped into a little Saudi school yeah. or French you school wouldn't. you don't get that Absolutely. exposure so Absolutely. it's uh, there was one part of so that I didn't like that I found myself participating in a lot and it involved a blue jacket. Oh yeah, detention. Yeah. What was it called? What was it called? Defaulter. Defaulter. I, oh. I think of it. I mean, it comes to me in my dreams. Yeah, yeah. I was, I, I, I did it frequently. You had no. Yeah. Uh, so defaulter at Stowe for those ha who have no idea of what it is. Um, it's, uh, it's a brutal punishment. It's public shaming. I think you'd wear a blue jacket and you'd have to wait tables at the end of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it's not, uh, you know, a dining hall with ten or twenty uh, pupils. And you're talking about five hundred plus. And you're wearing a blue jacket, and everyone's wearing a black blazer, clearing up left cutlery cups, you know, plates that people have left behind, and you stuck out like a sore thumb. I mean, that to me is modern day slavery. I found myself doing it a few times. I'm happy to hear that you have as well. Yeah, many. That's the one part of Stowe that I didn't like at all. But despite that, looking back, my three years at Stowe was probably the best time of my life in my growing up years. Yeah, that I, I, yeah, it was sort of public shaming to an extent, and I, 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 I'm slightly of the opinion that you know it's uh, we got caught doing something wrong. You take your punishment. It's a great lesson in life, from my point of view. That yeah, you know, if you do something wrong, you you pay the price. I'll do detention lines. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah. It's brutal. Like that that affected my personality growing up. Yeah, yeah it's brutal. You it's know, brutal. I'm different now. <laughs> <laughs> You don't wear blue. <laughs> no, never. No, no. Not, not that light blue no, no, shade. No, blue. You know. Goodness me. Uh, yeah, I did it many times. It's brutal. I, yeah, mean, I used to sweat thinking about doing that. God. It was a miserable I experience. I sleep the night before, as you say. Like yeah, yeah. It's on a Monday morning. Yeah, yeah. I'd have trouble sleeping Sunday night. It was a miserable experience. Miserable. Experience. And you had to do it for a week, if I remember. For a pretty yeah, a week or yeah, yeah. A, yeah, three days, but like felt like a month. Yeah. Good. I hope they don't do it anymore. You've uh, you've done a little pro, pro rugby after Stowe, yeah. You uh, you played at Northampton. Ah, uh, yeah. I was. A short spell. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, obviously Stowe, you know, we've, uh, 
I was uh, I was there on a on a rugby stroke sports scholarship mm -hmm. cricket and what have you, mm -hmm. and uh, very kindly asked by uh, Alan Hughes, who was then the yes. head of rugby, um, who was also the England under 19s coach and selector. Was he? Yeah. Under 19s. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a big coach. Hughes, he was a yeah, a fantastic head, coach. Head coach. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, they they changed. Okay. Uh, but every phenomenal. couple of years, but yeah. So he was, he's been, uh, you know, really uh, at the center of the improvement of yeah, sports, yeah. Uh, so, and specifically rugby. Anyway, no, so he said after leaving school, you know, you need to continue, you need to go on and, uh, and play. So he introduced me to the guys in Northampton and said, I'm gonna come along and have a trial. Mm -hmm. They then asked me to join the academy and, uh, and to play through, uh, played a bit of 18, under 18s, then I was taken up into the 21s. And uh, yeah, so I had a, a short spell, not too long. It was on and off for a couple of years. I had a lot of injuries. Uh, those boys are big and strong, and it's an attritional sport. When yeah. you leave school level, yeah. where it's uh, it's great. If you're a good school player, you get and get away with you know you know dominating yeah. if you like. Yeah. You go up a level when there's big, brutish you know monsters yeah. of 19-year-olds. Yeah. Um, the size and the physicality it's, just changes yeah. like you know to a different level. Did you play county at Stowe? Yeah, Bucks. That's, yeah. When, that's when you know you're good, when you're selected for county. Yeah, to an extent. Schoolboy rugby is fairly, is, uh, is, um, is yeah, good. When we, had, we had some fantastic schools in yeah. our county. Bucks yeah. had like, RGS, RGS High Wickham, which had half of the England squad. Yeah, yeah. Um, really? So there were a few of us at Stowe who played county. And then, yeah, after school, going on and trying to play a trade in rugby. I, I did for a bit and uh, picked up a lot of injuries. And concurrently with, with that rugby uh, education, started my formal education um, which was actually commercial property. Mm -hmm. So uh, I started my degree, but that's, uh, as a result of my sort of career ending injury, if you like, which is my back, uh, I, uh, I moved from Sirencester where I was doing a commercial property degree up to Newcastle. Okay. So uh, I went up, up north to uh, join the rest, well, join a, a load of Stoics who had gone up to Newcastle and uh, were having a great time and it offered a similar, similar degree. Mm -hmm. Different culture there? I've never been up north compared to Lo the London area. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, more affordable, like pe not, not as just uh, people in the north are friendly. There's such nice people. London yeah. London is can be a bit grumpy. Yeah. You know, uh it's a melting that sort of that British culture of, you know, a bit grumpy. Yeah. Not so you know No no one will ever ask me uh, you know how I'm doing today. Yeah. No, no you, if the someone asks you that on the street, you think they're nuts. <laughs> you run the other direction. Yeah, you really would. <laughs> but up north, people are so friendly. Are they? I mean oh. the Geordies as you call them, yes. the, the guys from Newcastle, yeah. I mean they're fantastic and they're yeah. lovely people and uh uh, it's, I think it's the biggest university in Europe mm -hmm. collectively. So, uh, yeah. so yeah, I had a great time up there. Um, but yeah, but my my, my education uh, uh, from Stowe comparatively going into a degree which I chose to do and I wanted to do and I was I was motivated to to uh, to excel at. It, w it was my real first sort of uh, appreciation because I've always been told that I wasn't academic, but I wasn't not academic. I was just not interested in not school. Interested, yeah. And my parents weren't pushy. Yeah. They let me get on with it. And I excelled at sports. I, I got on with that. And, and I had my plaudits for that part of life. And I, I didn't have my plaudits for my academia. But going to university, you're going there for a job. I was going there to, to get a, a good degree. And I got a good degree, a really good degree. Um, I got a 2-1 um, and, and really excelled when, uh, when you know, my, I think if my teachers thought that I was going off to university to do a degree and I got a 2-1, they'd have laughed me out of the room. Uh, but that, that was my first sort of real sort of, I guess, plunging myself into academia and actually working pretty hard and, and getting, uh, you know, and, and seeing the fruits of my labor. You took it seriously. Yeah, yeah, I did. So you did the property game for a bit. When did uh, your, your, your current brand, Tom Oliver uh, Nutrition, when did that come about? Well, the property game was uh, sort of property game. I'm, my mother's in property. We have a, we have a property firm, uh, family business, which my sister's now running. Um, my mother's retired, but back, back sort of when it, whenever it was, 15, 16 years ago, I uh, finished university um, and, and uh, essentially wanted to add to the business. I wanted to get, to get my, my letters as a, as a qualified surveyor mm -hmm. and add a surveying arm to what we have, so which we did and it was great. And then the, the property crash happened. And concurrently with that, I was always very much involved in uh, very passionate about nutrition, very passionate about uh, sports and exercise science, uh, uh, strength and conditioning, rehabilitation, more than anything, because I've, I've gone through so much rehab my, myself, yeah. that rehab was something I was fascinated by yeah. and really, uh, really passionate about. So I, I, I studied 
an awful lot off my own back. Um, and really, I'm, I wanted to move away from the property stuff. I, I had a couple of guys working for the department for the business and I thought, right, I'll, I'll slip off and go down to London and, and do what I really am passionate about. Mm -hmm. And, and I sort of moved over at that stage, and uh, and it was it was really uh, uh, working with well, being asked to work with people with with problems, injuries, mm -hmm. knees, yeah. hips, shoulders, backs, that really is is what my my real interest yeah. is, and, yeah. and where I really add value. Yeah. Um, and then a decade later, probably when was it, uh, 2015? I uh, I met a scientist actually, I met a scientist. Uh, who uh, sort of pioneered the omega-3 fatty acid market uh, over the last 20, 30 years. Um, and, and we had just a meeting of minds and he, he showed me some IP that he had around a, a form of omega-3 fatty acid, um, which is in phospholipid form, so a similar structure of lipid to the human cell membrane. Um, and I was like, wow, this is really interesting. This is groundbreaking. Um, so I said I'll take distribution, and we 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 had we have an a, a agreement, and a and a, I have a sort of license share for this particular IP, mm -hmm. um, and then off the back of that, we we gained good traction into a number of key retailers, uh, both in the UK and uh, around Europe, and a little bit in Southeast Asia, Singapore, UAE, um, and and we've developed a, a really a really core range of products, vitamins and minerals, yeah. um, uh, as a result of that, with a real focus on quality focus on sustainability, um, s sustainable packaging, recyclable materials, et cetera, et cetera. Amazing. So, uh, so yeah, it's really born, born from that one small, uh, one small idea, this yeah. product that we still refer to as the hero product. Um, so, uh, so, yeah. I was really impressed um, seeing it uh, on, on shelves, retail shelves in pharmacies, you know, and, and um, you there talking about it. I've seen a video on your Instagram. Um, talking about your products, it sounded like Chinese to me, you know, with the <laughs> Omega yeah. and, and all that. But the fact that you did, you know, I mean, see it come to fruition. I mean, you have your product on shelves in retailers, pharmacies, etc., in the UK, in the UAE. That's an accomplishment, you know, just to have your brand out there. How difficult was it to, to execute? Was it one of the hardest things you've ever had to do? Well, bearing in mind, I had zero experience. Yeah, and that. In, uh, in retail yeah. and the understandings and mechanics of distribution and, uh, and working with, uh, with retailers and, and all of the different uh, mechanics that come off the back of that. It's, uh, yeah, I had no idea. I mean, it's definitely an education. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you have to learn a lot, I'm sure. You sort of learn on your feet. But yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it was difficult, definitely difficult. And we started with only one or two products. We started with one product yeah. to start with. Okay. And, uh, and really, it's it's it's. Uh, I talk about the omega three. It's it's our hero product. It's, it's completely unique uh, and superior in in uh, in in our opinion. Um, so it was really well received by the retailers. Mm -hmm. I mean, because of the because of the ingredients from caviar and it's it's an embryonic form of omega three. Okay. They they really understand the uh, the superiority of it okay. as a nutritional product. So that wasn't too difficult actually. I'll, uh, but some of the learnings of of uh, of of, um, of the overall distribution. And uh, negotiating, uh, you know, with with guys in the Middle East and in Asia, and they really they really really go for you on the on the numbers. Yeah. So uh, trying to make it commercial was was hard, but yeah, I mean, not not too difficult. I, I have to ask the the question that just came to mind. Um, the U.S. is one of the biggest markets, you know, and they're really into um, health and fitness and everything related to that industry. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the FDA are a tough cookie, but has entering the U.S. market ever crossed your mind? Yeah, th I think a lot of people get uh, very excited by the U.S. market, and, uh, and my I, I agree. I mean, it's a fantastically exciting opportunity, massive country, an enormous population, yeah. um, massively into health. But for me, we, we've we've got some fantastically exciting you know areas we're doing business. We, we do business in the U.K., which is, is exciting, and, and big uh, market, yeah. it's it's a relatively big market. America's advanced it's very advanced very tough to get into competitively massive distribution issues uh challenges comparative to smaller geographies yeah. um your health and fitness regime you know i can't stop staring at your arms uh what do you do uh <laughs> what do you what's, what's your uh, re uh health uh, so what's your workout regimen like these days my workout regimen is very uh flexitarian i would say <laughs> I'm very, I'm seasonal. I think. Second while I Google that. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. 
<laughs> sounded good. Sounded great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, no, I, I'm, I really, I, I have prerequisites whereby I have to be able to do certain things in certain times, and that's just my in, ingrained sort of. Uh, Know, painful personality coming out. I have to be able to run a 10K in under 50 minutes, wow. which uh, which I always have to be able to do throughout the year. I have to be able to cycle 20Ks in half an hour, which, uh, which is, so So I try and incorporate these little things into my life where it, it holds me accountable. Uh, I never go into the gym not knowing what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. So it changes the moment. And the moment I'm playing, I'm loving golf. In Saudi, I got the cake. I mean, fantastic facility. Yeah. And my in-laws, I love them dearly. I hate them for getting to me, getting me involved in golf. <laughs> Was it them who got you into golf? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, big golfers. There. Yeah, they love their golf. <laughs> and they're fantastic golfers as well. So yeah, I mean, this yeah. it was July last year. I started, I, I had my first round of a cake. And uh, beautiful course, huh? And I played quite well. Yeah. I'd never, I'd never hit a golf ball ever. And uh, I was surprised. Yeah. Like, this game's not that bad. Yeah. And then as soon as you start thinking, how to play, how to change your grip or hit the ball or do this and everyone offers you lots of advice by this stage you fall to pieces yeah. so i went from being a moderate starter to complete disaster oh, God. and now i've built up yeah so it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a love-hate relationship mm -hmm. with with golf but uh, but yeah i mean at the moment i'm loving golf and uh, you walk at the golf course you're doing 10ks yeah. And then uh, and being in nature at the same time. Yeah, for sure. sure and all. So I, it's different. I do. I like a bit of weights. Mm -hmm. I like doing my my, my cardio, yeah. so my circuits mm -hmm. and stuff. So it, it depends. It really depends. You've done any of these Iron Man business? I've Iron done a couple of little ones, the baby ones. But I'm not. I'm, I'm really. I like my bang for my buck with exercise. Mm -hmm. I don't like spending hours and hours doing it. Yeah. I like going in there, going hard, Just efficiency, and getting out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I'm not. Uh, I I do enjoy it. My brother-in-law loves it. I hate them. Obviously, loves. Uh, it's all about it. Loves his uh, Iron Man and yeah, all that sort of yeah. stuff. I've done a couple of you know cycles, and if we're in a beautiful location and somewhere in Tuscany and cycling in the hills, that for me is motivation. Oh, wow. If it's uh, if it's on the gym for two hour in the gym for two hours on the bike, then forget it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it just becomes monotonous. Yeah. So it's. Uh, I have got. I've got. I've got a fairly. Uh, sort of flexible and relaxed yeah. approach to exercise, but I guess what I, what I when I get in there and I do it, it's. Uh, I, I tend to do it quite yeah. well. Um, you, uh, as we mentioned in the beginning, you uh, took the path less traveled by in marrying a Saudi girl. Um, how was that experience coming from, you know, a man from England? Um, how was that like marrying into a Saudi family? Wow, fairly seamless. I mean, yeah, I, I didn't have really have any expectations. I basically, you know, it was the old, old school romantic sort of story I guess you met a girl you fall in love it just so happens her family are lovely mm -hmm. and we get on really well and I love their company and uh, the end yeah. I mean uh, I feel very fortunate to uh, to have, uh, have have number one married a, a, an amazing woman and uh, and then to you know the the, the, the add-ons of that uh, of having in-laws who you love and you love spending time with genuinely, yeah. you know. This is not 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 for your podcast. It's not for the camera. No, no, I know. It's I, I, I I love. I, I genuinely enjoy spending time with my in-laws, yeah. which, contrary to so many of my friends, I mean, I'm not going to name names here because yeah, I'll be lynched. But you know, getting on with your in-laws is always one of those things you worry about. You know, you, as a guy getting married, you think, oh God, yeah. the in-laws have to have a relationship with them. Yeah. So I don't think it's so much about you know the, the the country of where the girl is from as much as what the in-laws are like. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And um, they are like parents to me. Yeah. Your in-laws yeah. are like parents to me yeah. because my best friend is your younger brother-in-law. Yeah. Um, and they don't like me home. They don't come. In-laws don't come any better, as far as I'm concerned, mm. than 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 what yours are like. You know, yeah. just. Really, like to me, they're like my second parents. I think I think they're almost second parents to a lot of people. Very, I mean, very, from what very I hear. lucky, Tom. Honestly, like yeah. I really look up to both of them. Honestly, and I can't yeah. wait to have your mother-in-law on the show. Yeah, um, she's. I think she's excited to come on. Oh God, just what she's accomplished, you know, in life. Um, just you know, her her constant storytelling and, and and wisdom. So many of us can learn from. You're lucky to to be around her every day, to be honest. Yeah, that she tells me I've got short legs. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's been it's been very it's yeah. been seamless and and uh, and really a surprise in a way. I mean, I, was, I didn't have expectations of of of, uh, of how my relationship would be with in-laws, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I have no complaints. Yeah. 
on paper, you know, marry the Saudi, oh my God, what's it going to be like? But then on the ground, you know, it's, uh, it's like, where have these people been all my life? Well, the amazing thing was, Rasha said to me, she said, uh, she said, by the way, my father is brutal, doesn't smile, mm. he's very intimidating, he doesn't talk. And like, I went to meet him. I just, I was like, are we talking about a different person? Because he was very smiley, very talkative, and super nice. And, but anyway, yeah, so, and since then, obviously, yeah. I think he believes in first impressions. <laughs> <laughs> He's the sweetest guy in the world. But, but from afar, you know, um, if you don't know him, uh, he, he looks like, you know, he'll, he'll hunt you down and take you out. <laughs> but, but the moment you engage in conversation, um, he's the sweetest guy in the world. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm blessed with the in-laws. Truly. Um, fatherhood, you were recently a father a year ago. Actually, it was birthday two weeks ago, right? Yeah. yeah. 21st was like? February. What was that? Well, any learnings from there? Any learnings? Uh, yeah, fantastic. I, I didn't know I would enjoy it as much as I have. First couple of months, you know, were you... Uh, all hands on deck, waking up at crazy hours. Yeah, to an extent. Yeah, okay. fair share. Yeah, I mean, there's always disruption at the beginning, but you know when you've got this little beautiful guy sitting looking at you in the middle of the night, it's the best. when you're doing a milk feed, and you know, yeah. and, uh, obviously Rasha doesn't hear some, so uh, you know, you're, I feel even more anxious about having to wake up and hear. Yeah. You know, he's okay. Yeah. And for me, whenever I'm in charge on duty, I just don't sleep. Okay. Whenever it's my night to be up, yeah, I, I don't sleep. Just I mean, antennas are up, you know, on guard. I have this really weird anxiety that something's going to happen on my, on my watch. Yeah. It's a weird thing. It happened with my mother, my, not my mother, my sister's son. son. When, I, when I was uh, babysitting him as well, I would be really anxious. But no, it's been fantastic. And yeah. he's, a, he's, a, uh, he's a rough, tough little guy. And he, you know, he likes his, uh, his rough play. And he looks stocky, huh? He's stocky. He can he's, also play a uh, hooker. In front he's, of defi him. he's definitely stocky. <laughs> Take a page out of his father's <laughs> Just hope he's, he just doesn't, you know, get into scuffles here. He's way tougher than me. Um, no, he's a, he's a dream and, yeah. uh, and developing and changing every day. So it's been. Uh, Did you feel this like uh, like sudden urge, like the moment he was born, of like protection, like you know, you're you're just always on guard, no matter what happens, um, tense almost around him, in, in 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 protecting him from from the world. Yeah. I, I, I say that because I mean I got that sensation when when my son was born. Yeah, I, I guess I go through moments. She's definitely protective. Yeah. And it's an uh, interesting side to your character that you perhaps haven't seen before. And when you're sort of Very true. analyzing what you've just, how you just dealt with that situation, yeah. it's quite interesting. So, you know, you're becoming more caring and less selfish and you know, think putting this little guy first. And yeah. that's, uh, that's nice. Yeah, it is, truly. Um, <clears throat> any advice to uh, younger guys, you know, coming up? Um, you know, entering the world of rugby, um, you know, or, or fitness in general. Um, any words of wisdom to, to such people? Oh, God. I think I'm outdated. I think I'm probably outdated to give any advice on that stuff because everything's online, everything's YouTube and Instagram things. and yeah. all this stuff, you know, this, uh, this, has, this, yeah. this yeah. blog business. Yeah. I mean, it's, everyone's doing that. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't like the whole online. Yeah, yeah, you want it in person. Area, would, so. would you be okay with your son, you know, going down the path you did in um, uh, Swanbourne, was it? Perhaps, uh, yeah, perhaps called Swanbourne, yeah. Swanbourne, Stowe, and take that path with... Uh, ah, because I'm maybe. I'm, 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 I'm sort of the opinion that between now, Zaid is, is now one year and, yeah. a, and a week old. Yeah. I think in the next 10 years, the, the, the architecture of the education system will change just to quite a degree. Uh, the way the way we're going online and and the different uh, the different uh, the different syllabuses mm -hmm. and the potential change for the syllabus as as a whole yeah. uh, both in Europe and or UK and America uh, so I, I have no idea I mean I think cross that bridge when we come to it actually Russia and I were talking recently about you know putting him down for schools and yeah I guess as a from, from a history point of view then it would be great to put him down for Stowe yeah. and, and to see him go just I, not I, Harrow please I, I would love. <laughs> I would love that. Um, Harrow is more expensive, so definitely not. It's off the cards. Um, probably get a sports scholarship. You know, yeah, hopefully, your DNA, hopefully, so. hopefully yeah. a sports scholarship. Save, save us some money. But we really enjoyed that culture, and I kind of want my son, and you probably do with yours as well. Want you know, you'd want them to experience that public school 
you know, life. Yeah, that's why I think it will remain. I mean, I, I think the educational system will change. I think the syllabus should change yeah. and will change. Yeah. I think the the, uh, the different subjects you take will definitely change. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the, the the memories, the bonds, the the relationships you create, the uh, the sort of the the, the culture. Uh, you know, you, you know what it's like going to schools like Stowe, and there's many of them. There's many schools like Stowe, Wellington, Harrow, yeah, all these lovely schools. Bradley. Uh, Stowe's, I think it's Stowe's 100, and, it's 100 years old next year. Is that it? 1923 they started, oh, okay. with 99, wow. 99 Stoics wow. under J.F. Roxburgh. Okay. That's good. Um, uh, but no, not, so to approaching 100 years old, so it's that, that sort of element of history, uh, immersing yourself in that amazing environment, yeah. that, Beautiful house, the grounds, the grounds. We didn't appreciate them back then. You don't appreciate it when you're there. It's, it's, it's uh, when you go back a few years later. It's an open air museum. Yeah. When you're when you're plunged into the real world, yeah. and then yeah. you go back to this sort of idyllic setting yeah. Yeah. of this beautiful house and these thousands of acres yep. of countryside with all these facilities. It's next level. It's next level. I mean, and, and that you want your child to experience. Absolutely, especially if you're you know living in Saudi in the desert, where everything is, is pretty much sand. Well, so let me flip the question back to you. Mm. Why do why did you go to Stowe? Why do so many internationals come to British schools? The language must be something. Yeah, not so much for me at least because no? it was English at home. Mm. Uh, the education system wasn't uh, as progressed as progressive back in '95. Uh, mm. um, you know, we we went to a school that was decent, but uh, many other schools have come up since that are that are great, yeah. like the current British school. Uh, my nephew goes there. Um, or the American school, you know, they're really proper schools, you know, British teachers, American teachers. Um, we didn't have that 25 years ago. So uh, my dad and mom were, you know, quick to decide that um, we, had a, we had a house in, in Sunningdale and Papawick was just a few towns over. Like, let's put them into Papawick. So did two years there and then still, but really just because Saudi wasn't as advanced academically mm. 25 years ago. But today the landscape's different. So today, you know, would my son go there? Maybe, maybe not. You know, it's good enough to keep him at home. Mm. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I wouldn't change anything about it. Mm. Um, but, but yeah, things are different now, which is good. Saudi has stepped up educationally. Mm. Do you see Saudi having boarding school sort of like <sighs> environments? Good question. It's not really in our culture. Huh? Yeah, it's, it's, it's. You know, I'd, I'd like that. I like the camaraderie of, uh, you know, having uh, your friends with you, you know, all, all the time. Uh, being on the sports team, you know, doing homework together, uh, eating together, uh, schooling together. But I just don't think it's in our, in our lifestyle as much mm. as it is in, in England and in the U.S. So I don't, I don't think I don't think that's on the horizon. It's British parents just like getting rid of the kids and then sort of you know, just <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll see you in a month. Yeah, exactly. It's ideal. <laughs> that was, that's what, I think that's the reason I went to Stowe. My mother was busy running the business and she was like, oh, I'll see you in a month. <laughs> yeah. Go and go and get on with it. <laughs> it's lovely. Um, yeah, I feel it too. Like when my son, you know, three years old, they're coming up to a week's holiday now, and we're like, how the hell are we gonna, you know, how are we gonna entertain him? I'm at work, you know, Sarah's got her her stuff going on. Um, so being at, at school definitely takes a little bit of pressure off the parents. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. yeah. Uh, Tom Wanesy, thanks a lot for your time today. I know, you know you're a busy man um, between family and work and what you do. Um, appreciate you taking the time. Do you have any uh, closing comments, any uh, advice, anything you want to put out there before we say goodbye to you? I think my idea of the rebrand Mopra, the Saudi Arabia, oh, Saudi Arabia's answer to Oprah is a fantastic <laughs> idea. Uh, Think of this moment, God. Like, like Zuckerberg, when they change, they drop the uh, the. 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 Yeah. This is like you know, this is one of those moments. You you are the Oprah of Saudi Arabia, yeah. so we we have to just. You, know. you are a troll. <laughs> <laughs> you want you want to convert this to a late night talk show? With that the would, coffee mugs. That would be fantastic. <laughs> Call it Oprah. With Jay Leno. You are hilarious. <laughs> no, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Tom. Much Great to catch up. Thanks, yeah. for, thanks for having me. I'd, I'd like to see you think about one day moving to Saudi. I mean, you seem to enjoy yourself whenever you're here. You always got a smile on your face. You're enjoying the sunshine. Yeah. Maybe one day call it home. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. Things yeah. are changing for the better. Yeah. I know you see that. We see that. Mm. So maybe one day we'll have you here as a resident. Stranger things have happened. I have my agama now. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, yeah. All right. Congrats. Yeah, yeah. I can Fantastic. come and go. Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. Very nice. I mean, Saudi is changing an awful lot. I mean, for, for, for I came here 10 years ago. Um, over t just over ten years ago, mm. and uh, it was intimidating coming to Saudi as, as a as a 
as a Brit, you know, I didn't have any education about Saudi. I didn't really have any, yeah. uh, you know, background information. And what you see in the media, you know, is at the time was sort of different, very different. So uh, it's changed. But it's changed a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's changed a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, euphemism, but yeah, it's changed a hell of a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, back when you were here, uh, women were like completely covered up. Yeah, I couldn't wear shorts to the mall. I, I couldn't. Security yeah. at the mall would be like, sorry, go change. Yeah, that, I, that was thing of the past. Now. I think the second day I was here, I was chucked out of the mall. Yeah, for wearing shorts. Yeah, yeah. and that's just one of the things that changed. You know, mm. so a lot more intricate stuff that happened yeah. for the better. Mm. So um, I'm glad you're taking note. Thanks very much, Tom. Appreciate your time. See you on the next one. All the best, brother. Cheers.